Okay, in this video, which camera should you buy for 360 footage? The Insta360 ONE X2 or the GoPro Max? So these are two great cameras on paper, but which one is the best one? Which one should you buy? Insta 360 ONE X2 or the GoPro Max? I've got one clear favorite, and it's for a number of reasons, which I'll explain throughout the video, but at the end of the video, I'll tell you which one I think you should grab. So image quality is gonna be pretty similar on these cameras. The Insta360 shoots 5.7K in 30 frames per second. The GoPro Max shoots 5.6K in 30 frames per second. So the picture is good. The Insta360 ONE X2 has HDR mode with pure shot image processing, which offers better dynamic range results. So image quality, similar. Now, editing 360 footage is probably the thing that scares most people, and it's come a long way since the days of old. Now you can edit 360 footage on your phone through apps. Both of these cameras have decent apps, and there is desktop studios for use on MacBook and PC as well. I've made some notes because there's a massive difference, in my eyes anyway, between these two cameras. Software, in particular, is a weak point when it comes to the GoPro. I've had absolute nightmare when it comes to actually processing the footage on the desktop software. The app isn't too bad, we'll, we'll touch on that in just a second. The GoPro I've put so frustrating, that's at the top of my notes. Uh, when you open all the clips into the player, it opens multiple windows for some reason. I don't know why it does that. It opens the windows for all of the different clips on Mac anyway. That straight away was a little bit frustrating. It gives you a tutorial every single time. I couldn't figure out how to turn off the tutorial. I don't want to learn how to do it every single time. I did the tutorial for the first clip and then the remaining clips I knew what to do, so I didn't know the tutorial every time, but it just kept on feeding me the tutorial. So again, frustrating. Now I know it's a learning curve when it comes to learning new software and I've got very used to using the Insta360 software, but I just didn't find it as intuitive as you would do with the Insta360 Desktop Studio. Anyway, that's enough hitting on the GoPro Desktop Studio. I didn't, I just didn't like it. It didn't work well for me and it was very, very poor quality when it exported. I had to do it a couple of times to figure out the best settings. The Desktop Studio in comparison with the Insta360 Studio is absolutely brilliant. If you've used any kind of editing software in the past, you'll be able to use this straight away. There's loads of creative options, there's loads of reframing options, and the keyframing is easy to use and just does as you want it to. I use the Desktop Studio for all of my reframing 360 footage, then I'll export it in ProRes 422, and then I can edit the full video for different purposes in Final Cut Pro. For most people though, you'll be editing your footage in an app, and the GoPro app is okay. The Insta360 app has a big leap forward. That's where Insta360 have improved over the last few years. GoPro haven't really updated that app in the last three or four years. Insta360 are constantly releasing updates and it gets better every single day. First of all, the GoPro app wouldn't connect to the GoPro. I don't know why, but it didn't. It took me a couple of attempts to get it connected, which is fine. You get that with some cameras sometimes, but it's just a bit of an annoyance. But once it connected, actually editing the uh, footage inside the GoPro app was simple. If It would be simple for most people to use, and it worked okay. You can reframe it for different aspect ratios for social media or 16 by 9 for, uh, for YouTube. So it, it worked all right. There's no real creative options in there. You can't really do anything special with it apart from reframe the footage to how you want it. The Insta360 app in comparison is a bit more detailed. There's a lot more creative options in there and they have their shot lab, their creative studio, which gives you step-by-step -step guides to add different effects to your videos as well. So there's loads and loads of different effects you can do with the Insta360 ONE X2 and any other 360 cameras from Insta360. It's a lot of 360s, but I know, but there is a lot more options on there to do it. And the app is very simple to use. Reframing the footage is very good. It exports okay and it's a lot more more intuitive and a lot easier to edit your footage in the Insta360 app 
than it would be in the GoPro. That's my experience anyway. So when it comes to AI and it comes to app and software, Insta360 are leaps and bounds above and beyond GoPro. And if that's something that really sells for you, then the Insta360 ONE X2 or any of their other 360 cameras is definitely the way to go. If you're somebody that's gonna be using this camera for moto vlogging or sports or skiing or anything that involves wearing a helmet and you wanna mount it on the top of your head or anything like that, that the stitching line is gonna show up in different clips, then the Insta360 again has a massive advantage. The lenses are parallel together on here and they are opposite each other. So when the stitching line is on your head, it's a total clean stitching line. There's no offset of the image. This image on this side will be parallel to this image on this side. As opposed to the GoPro Max, the lenses, for some reason, they designed this camera with the lenses on opposite sides of the body. So for instance, when it's on your head, you can see a big split in the stitching line and it just looks terrible. It doesn't look good at all. And you can just blindly see where the stitching line with the Insta360 ONE X2, you can barely see where the stitching line is if you've got it on a helmet. So for some reason they did that and that, that, that design was very strange for me. This boxy design, I think they uh, went this way so they could get a bigger screen on here. And that's fine, the bigger screen is an advantage for the GoPro Max, but using the smaller screen is not much of a bigger problem. And I don't find myself using the screen apart from to set the resolutions or change it to slow motion on the odd occasion. The one thing I really don't like about the GoPro Max is you've got these stupid lens caps, which sort of is a consequence of having the lenses on opposite side of the body, which is a bit of a crazy decision to me. It's just the way, the, the way it's built. So these lens caps, are, I mean, it's good to have lens caps, but it's sort of, it's, you have to hold these individually and then take them off. They're a little bit fiddly to get off in the first place. And then you've got to sort of store those somewhere until you want to put them back on. That's a, it's a really bad design in my eye. The Insta360 ONE X2 has just got this sort of sleeve that goes over the top of the lenses. Now with the Insta360, you've got the lenses opposite each other. So this sort of little sock goes over the top like that and it's easy it's just the better design in my eyes but that's just a little bit of a niggle about the gopro max design wise the camera is better on the insta360 1x2 it's just a bit of a sleeker slimmer design it slips into your pocket the gopro max is just a bit chunky and the way that the lenses are orientated doesn't help with that stitching line either when it comes to doing different effects bullet time's a brilliant thing you can do with the insta360 1x2 and you can do it with the insta360 one rs as well with their 360 mod attached to it bullet time a brilliant effect to do transitional shots or different things in your videos. I love bullet time. It's something I use all the time. You can do it with the bullet time cord or their handle. Either way, it, it records in 3K slow motion. You get really good effects. It's something you can't do with any other camera other than the Insta360. So that's just a massive advantage when it comes to Insta360. Audio is another massive part of videos, not so much when it comes to 360 footage because you don't generally use a microphone with it, but if you want to vlog, and I have done recently, you get a really different effect with your vlogs with 360 footage. And if you want good audio, then you need an external microphone. That is very clear. Now the GoPro doesn't support external microphones on there, so that's out the window. The Insta360, you can add an external audio source. And not only that, if you set it up with their cold shoe and the Rode wireless go to then it's still invisible you can vlog and have good audio and still see no stitching line it's still an invisible sort of selfie stick view so not only does it support external audio you still get that cool 360 invisible selfie stick view I've bought this GoPro Max myself. I've got sent the Insta360 from Insta360, that has to be said, but I've been using this camera over the last few months and it's by far the best 360 camera you can buy. And even some GoPro fanboys out there will actually fully admit that this is the best 360 camera out there. GoPro have got a long way to catch up when it comes to AI, when it comes to software, when it comes to camera design. This just falls short in a lot of ways. It's okay if you're just a casual shooter, but if you're somebody that has to have sort of the best 360 footage on a regular basis, then there's only one camera to buy, and that is the Insta360 ONE X2. Now, like I said, full disclosure, Insta360 sent me this camera, but they have no input on this video. They have just given me this, told me to be honest, and test it out. And like I said, I've been using this for the last few months, and it is just every way far better than the GoPro Max. This, in my eyes, is a very poor camera, and it's a very poor 360 camera at that 
I just wouldn't buy it, and that is my honest opinion. If you wanted a normal action camera, by all means go for the GoPro 10, but when it comes to 360 footage, there's only one king. Well, that's it for this video. I hope it helped you make some kind of decision. My personal choice is the Insta360 every time, but the decision is yours. Make sure you do subscribe for more videos like this and press the bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Give this video a like, it really does help too. Until next time though, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.